Hi folks, this is Host Mandeep. It is Sunday, August the 23rd and um, I'm going to do another tutorial today and uh, we're going to take a look at the heat map uh, feature inside of Thinkorswim and um, figure out how to identify stocks that are uh, you know, either a hot, cold, or neutral, right? So in order to get into um, the uh, heat map function, you click on the market watch, and uh, inside of market watch, there's uh, a bunch of sub tabs. Uh, you have quotes, you have alerts, financing rates, calendar, you click on visualize, right? And under visualize, you will see this heat map. So that's one of the things you can look at uh, first thing in the morning, and I don't do this, and I'll show you why, because I have a slightly different mechanism. Because uh, I use a, a static sector list, but you can start by taking a look at this list uh, and see uh, which are the stocks that are you know in green, right? And obviously, the bigger the size here of the uh, box, that essentially means uh, it has the a bigger market cap. And uh, as most of you know, Apple has just crossed the two trillion market cap, so it's it, it is uh, it'll be the biggest one. But uh, just off the you know, just right off the bat, you know that the market is kind of more neutral to bearish. Um, and this is, um, you know, Friday's data. And uh, because most of the stuff is red, right? There's very few uh, green things across the board. So that at least gives you the information the market is neutral to um, sort of bearish, right? So you cannot go heavy on, on the long side. But if you do decide to go uh, and take some trades on the long side, then you have to be extremely selective in nature. Right? So what I do is um, I actually go and take a look at the public list and I typically will you know, look at the Russell 1000. That's a good place to start. The first thing you notice is that uh, you, know, you can immediately see uh, what the different sectors are. So you know, communication and consumer discretionary, so on and so forth. And inside of each there are further subsectors, right? So when I click on the communication uh, services, you can see predominantly red, right? So there's really no interest in um, any of these stocks. And as you can click here, you know, it's the same story, right? Now let's take a look at, you know, consumer discretionary and uh, click on that one and see uh, what's going on. And one of the things you see is that uh, there is uh, a certain level of interest in some of the consumer discretionary stocks. You can look at the restaurants um, and some of the hotel industries. So you have names like Marriott, you have Hilton, you have Hyatt. Um, you have some of the restaurant names as well, like McDonald's, uh, some of the speciality retailers like Home Depot and uh, loads as well in this list, right? So when you start seeing a certain grouping, right, that gives you, that tells you there's a little focus on that sector. So if you're looking at consumer discretionary and then you go and look at the subsector, you can see there's an interest in, um, you know, the hotels and some of the fast food restaurants on that particular day, right? Now you can, you know, again, look at uh, consumer staples and you'll see yeah, there's a name. You look at the energy sector, predominantly red, right? So there's uh, no point trying to trade a sector which is not in vogue, right? There's no interest in that, you know, whether it's from institutions or it comes from retailers um, or some kind of a combination. Take a look at the financials. There's nothing that really shows up uh, in bright green here, right? So if you look at the healthcare sector, yes, you have J and J, you have TMO, um, and uh, if you look at the industrial sector, you had um, Deer, which I believe had good earnings. And then again, you know, if you go into the information technology sector, you will see <clears throat> uh, Apple and Nvidia as some of the dominant names in that, right? Uh, let me show you one other thing you can do instead of the heat map here. You just uh, click on that and you can look at the index watch. So when we look in this section uh, and uh, one of the things you notice is um, for the S&P 500, you can see the number of issues that are advancing, the number of issues that are declining. <clears throat> and uh, you can see the more issues that are declining than uh, advancing. So at best, the market, as I mentioned, was neutral do a little bit on the bearish side, right? So when you have this, uh, uh, you have a better correlation. So sometimes you will see the issues that are advancing are 80% and only 20% are declining or, or even 70% is a good threshold. 
those are days when the market is really trending, right? So there's a good opportunity to go along. And, and the likelihood on those days is that most of the pullbacks will get bought. Okay? But in this, on a day like this, you have to be uh, very selective. Anyway, what I end up doing is I have a static list of uh, the various sectors that um, uh, the market is being subdivided into, and I look at those. What I'll do is I'll show you a place where you can download the sector list, and this is a static list. Now, within that, I add a, a column which is called the percentage change. So when you sort this by percentage change in the morning, it'll give you what the top sectors are. So this FNGU is a, a conglomerate for <clears throat> the heavyweight tech stocks, heavyweight uh, technology stocks. So this consists of, you know, your Googles of the world, the Teslas of the world, the Amazons, the NVIDIAs, and so on and so forth. So once I see this sector to be on the top, my, you know, e initial response is to look at some of those names and see, you know, how are charts performing, right? Then you have, you know, the uh, this is the, um, if you look into the charts, you'll see this is the home construction um, ETF. So as um, I see this to be the second sector, uh, my thought process is to start looking at uh, some of the home builders like DR Horton, Lennar, Pulte Homes. Um, I'll start to look at Home Depot and Lowe's, right? Those are the four or five names that uh, um, I'll focus on. Okay, so then I'll look at, uh, you know, the third sector is the uh, the gambling index. And uh, of course, you know, one of the things you can see is this, uh, you know, faded very quickly. But if this is um, sort of continuing um, and chugging along through the day, the standard names that come to mind are, you know, Wind Resort, Las Vegas Sand and MGM Studios, right? So once I've honed down on uh, the sector performance list and uh, I figure out which are some of the stocks that are the leading sectors for that day, uh, the next step is to start uh, looking at the day trading list. And this is a dynamic list that gets adjusted. And this is something, um, fortunately, is not free, but it comes with uh, the ultimate trading uh, system that uh, you know, I provide, whether people buy it on the desktop or uh, for their mobile devices. Mm -hmm. So some of the key names that you start seeing, you know, you see stocks like NVIDIA, you see stocks like Apple, and these are the same ones that were showing up in a, the visualized list when we took a look at the heat map, right? So as you can see here, Apple had like, you know, a, a fantastic trade. There's one trade that opened here um, at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It closed here, then it had another trade here. And this is assuming that you're day trading. Otherwise, this trade is still open and would continue into the next day. So I, I continue to be long on, on this trade. I didn't close it. So if you right click on it, you can see the, the two trades that played out very well with the 100 shares, you know, 564 and 132 in the second trade. Right, so then we take a look at NVIDIA. And again, these are names that were also showing up on the heat map and um, and then they were also part of the list because that list is essentially looking for stocks that are outperforming the market and look at show report and we'll see the very last transaction. So this had a profit of 602. So there were some other names and we can go through a couple of these just to see uh, once they're in the list, how well do they end up doing? So you had GoDaddy, which uh, also had a buy signal using the UTS system and this had a profit of $76 assuming you trade 100 shares and then of course <clears throat> this BABA so BABA had uh, a really good option flow as well um, on uh, Friday plus you know it was uh, in the uh, you know the day trading list and this ended up doing quite well as well, $467 of profit in this. So it's, and, and you know, you have Costco and some other names as well. And I also mentioned that uh, some of the home builder names were part of uh, the heat map, but uh, you know, by default, they're also showing up on my list as well. So in my case, I don't need to go and take a look at the heat map and, and, and to drill down because some of those things are constantly changing in the morning. So much easier for me to just focus myself on this list right so i limit myself to the list where um, you know as long as bo both these columns are green and these two columns are also something that i've made available on my website so one of them is called the dynamic orb and the other one is called the relative volume 
So a lot of people like trading either the 15 minute, 30 minute or the hour orb and this one is dynamically adjusting. So my focus is just clearly on these stocks because you know they're breaking the orb plus at the same time they also are trading high relative volume right and there's a I have a unique way on which by which I calculate um, the relative volume. So as I mentioned some of the home builders were there and so those were on the list as well. Um, and uh, you can see that this one also triggered a very good, uh, you know, buy trade, um, $154 in this trade. And then I mentioned some of the fast food uh, restaurants were also on the heat map, like McDonald's and, you know, Chipotle. And you have um, Shake Shack here, which also had a trade. So, and J&J was another one that I mentioned, even though it wasn't in one of the leading sectors. But uh, when we looked inside the uh, the the healthcare sector and the you know the drug sector uh, as a, a subsector um, this was one of the stocks as well right and this one had a profit of 166 as well uh, just using the day trade so you can use this market watch and you can use uh, both the index watch as well as the heat map uh, to get a good feel of you know what are some of the market movers for that day right and second you can see if the advanced decline line ratio is 70 30 in like either direction then you know uh, the market is trending so i discussed some of the names that were in the day trading list and um, you know it only becomes useful when you end up taking some of those trades so i'll give you a snapshot as i mentioned you know there was apple uh, that was in the trade and it had two trades you know this nine that made a profit of 920 and another you know roughly $200. I also talked about Baba, which had a good trade of 543. I lost 62 in another trade. Uh, we discussed Costco and Nvidia, and both of those are also trades that I ended up taking. And um, I ended up losing a small amount of money in Walmart and Tesla. Tesla did have a buy signal, but it ended up uh, not doing well. And uh, consequently, uh, you know, uh, lost some money on it. So the last thing I, I want to show place where you can download the scripts, right? So for that, you need to go into my website, the beardedinvestor.net and uh, drill down on the blog section. And uh, so you'll have to scroll down uh, till you see the, the free script section that I have there. And uh, so here we are. Here's the free script section. Just click on it. And... Uh, so you'll see, so I have the sector performance list that I talked about. So you can, you know, double click and install this. And there's some other useful scripts that I have. Some of these automatically draw support and resistance. And uh, you can go through uh, some of the other ones as well. And uh, if you find uh, value in them, feel free to download them and uh, use them as well. So I hope this helps and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.